Hello and welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is a reading for Aquarius. If Aquarius is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. And if there's anything that you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know in the comments, okay? Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Aquarius, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. All right, there is an Eight of Swords. Don't despair. We will get through this, all right? This is not going to be... This is not going to be that bad. Yes, we've got fire energy. We've got water. We've got all of this really wonderful energy that is just crushing that Eight of Swords, right? So that's not even... That's not even going to be an issue. That's going to be something very easily uh, overcome, I think, right? Let's finish up the Path of the Serpent here, and then we can get into that. Yeah, this is all really, really nice. Really nice. There is something that you're struggling with right now, though. Uh, let's quickly do this mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. We're going to use the Smith Waite Tarot. One card, we're going to put the alien on top. We're going to set it down over there. We're not going to look at it until the very end. And hopefully that card will tie everything together and give us the confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. Okay, so we've got major, major, major. We've got fire, good fire energy right here. A little bit of water, a little bit of air, right? And we've got this, the Earth Court cards. We've got this World or Universe card, which is very interesting in this position. Uh, but let's start with the problem right every solution needs to have a problem so here's the problem um the problem is that you're not accepting your own like talent you're you're, you're not accepting your own worth uh you're not accepting your own uh judgment it's like you have no trust in yourself right now you know i feel like um you've kind of been waiting for validation when that validation needs to come from within you there's nobody around you. There's nobody around you um, that needs to give you permission to do anything, right? So the Eight of Swords here, this is us really kind of having this, this confusion uh, about where to go, what we're doing, who we are. Um, so I feel like you've kind of been locked up, not so much in the water energy, though we do, I mean, we are being crossed by this Queen of Cups, so maybe I don't want to say that just yet. I feel like it's mostly uh, some mental stuff for you. It's, it's confusion. It's an inability to really see things as clearly as you would like, okay? And I feel like this is kind of preventing us from making progress, okay? I see a lot of cards of progress on the path of the serpent. I think we're overcoming this, this difficulty. And like I said, this feels mostly like it's a lack of confidence or a lack of trust in yourself, you know? I think you have all of these great ideas, but you just, um, you're almost afraid of them, right? You almost don't trust yourself to, that you can do this. I don't, I don't know exactly what the thoughts are, but I feel like they're preventing you from, from really, from, from doing this, right? We got, we're surrounded by fire here. We're, we're, well, we're cradled by this fire, right? This is your intensity. This is your creativity. These are your good ideas. This is your will. This is your spiritual light, your force, your fire, um, your enthusiasm. You have all of this, but then when we get to the, we get to this air in the middle, and then yeah, there is this water here that I think is, the water might be really the solution to some of this, to be, to be honest, right? And I, I, I'm aware of the, the pun there with the water and the idea of a solution. Dissolving things in the water, right? With all this fire energy, though, there's something that you really, that you really want to do, something that you're about to really do. I think it's going to be major. Um, I, I feel like you're right on the verge of something. Looking at these cards, there, there's something, it's almost like you're just about to go on stage, 
right? You're just about to premiere. You're just about to debut. There's something holding you back, right? There is this this really kind of nasty eight of swords that's in your way. This is you kind of, this is talking yourself out of it is what that is. Plain and simple. You're talking yourself out of this. We need to get rid of this eight of swords and maybe uh, dissolve that in this queen of cups. Maybe this is some water energy that we need. Maybe we need to be completely uh, open and receptive and transparent with ourselves. Why do you, why are we doing that? Why are we doing this, this eight of swords stuff? Well, maybe that's something that we need to deal with, but not right this moment because I feel again with this fire energy I feel like you are right on the verge of stepping out on stage now's not the time to get into all of this air and water stuff right we got to deal with these and I think we will but first you have to you have to perform essentially right you have to get out and do this thing that you're doing okay so it's kind of like we need to we need to turn the air and we need to turn the water off, right? It's like uh, it's it's turn the fan off and uh, shut off the water and do this activity. Whatever this is, it it seems really really major. Now let's get into the fire a little bit. Okay, we'll circle back around to what's going on with these issues. Okay, because I feel again that for some deep emotional reason. You're talking yourself out of this really big deal, right? This really major thing that you're just about to do. It's like you're you're just about to to, um, you know, join the I don't know the biggest band in the world or something. But you're talking yourself out of it. Maybe you're not confident in your own skills. Maybe um, maybe it's just a little bit of stage fright. Maybe there's something going on, some sort of inferiority complex or something that is preventing you from just going for this like this is this is big okay and behind you is this princess of wands we're going to put these cards back for now behind you is the princess of wands and i feel like this was you um initiating this right you this is something that you're passionate about something that maybe since you were a kid you've always wanted to do this right um this is the the courage that you had to begin this skill or talent or, or you know whatever this is i'm kind of i'm using you know like the music industry as a as a, a metaphor here like you're you're just about to join i don't know what's the biggest band in the world the beatles or something right i don't know i like the beatles um so it's like you're you're just about you've been invited to join the band right and you're just about to go out on stage and it's something that you've always wanted You've uh, practiced and trained and studied and, you know, you're good at what you do, right? You've done all of the hard work. Behind you is all of the hard work, right? And you've done it. So, you know, you've got the skill, you've got the talent. And in the future, what we're looking forward to, I mean, this is you basically in the Beatles rocking out right? All of this hard work has now developed into this maturity, right? You, you know your craft. You're a real artist with it, right? We've learned the technical skills. We see some more kind of technical cards around. You've learned this. Now, it may not be music, okay? It's whatever. Um, you've learned your instrument. You know your craft. You're good at it. And now that technical skill has blossomed into real artistry, real mastery, right? Where now you can kind of throw the rules out the window and you can just perform magic, right? You don't have to follow the same laws as when you were training. Now you can, you can bend those laws, right? Now you can really, really improvise and create, right? It's like a, a masterful, uh, you know, jazz um, player, any instrument. You have to know the structure. You have to know the rules and the measures and the phrasing. You have to know the chords until you can do them in your sleep. You can do them with your eyes closed. You can do them when you're just dead and in the ground. Um, it's only then that you can go outside the lines, 
right? That you can color all over the page, that you can improvise, right? And um, you, you can't do that until you've done all of this hard work. And I think that's the skill level that you're at. I think you really know what you're doing. And you're reaching this level. You may not quite be here yet, but this is your, your potential, okay? To be this kind of a master at what you do, to where you can color outside the lines, okay? But there's something holding us back. And down beneath everything is the six of wands. It's beneath the surface. It's something that's kind of not yet, not yet in your conscious mind. This is your confidence. This is your being equal to the other people in the band, right? This is you, you know, being uh, an equal partner, being able to carry your own weight. You are just as artistic and smart and powerful and, you know, just as, as skillful and as masterful as, as everyone else. Okay. But for some reason, this is, this confidence is pushed down beneath the surface. It's, it's covered up. It's kind of, it's being pushed down by these, these cards, right? The eight of swords and that queen of cups. So these two are the odd fellows here. These, these two are what we're trying to kind of get over. Either we jump over them, we swim underneath, or we just fold space and time and, and uh, just, you know, create a wormhole right through that space. And we get to this queen of wands, the queen of wands. I was told that I don't announce the cards clearly enough, so I'm going to try to do that. I want you to know what these cards are. So the six of wands. Uh, this is the confidence. This is your skill, your mastery. This is you being equal to the task, right? This is you being just as, as perfect as everyone else in the band. But you don't yet believe this. There is this air energy and this water energy that is keeping this down. Okay, we need to get, we need to get through this. But I don't know if now is the right time for you to dive into this water and figure this whole thing out. Try to dissolve these swords by using our emotional water, right? Really getting in there, right? I don't know if now is the right time because I feel like something is, is imminently um, waiting for you. We have up above everything this moon energy. This is the 18th mystery of the tarot, the moon card. And... It's showing that there is, um, there is this scary place that you're about to step into. This is what I mean when it's like you're about to go on stage and you have terrible stage fright. You know what I mean? Um, you could be the absolute perfect uh, musician, everything we talked about. But when it comes time to step out in, onto that, that dark stage and then the lights are going to come on, that's when we panic, right? So it's almost the anticipation of having to perform or having to be out in, in public and, and doing this thing in front of other people. Now, again, it doesn't have to be music. It's whatever you're doing. Um, I hope it's music, though, because I, I love music. In another life, I think I was a, a, a musician on a stage. Um, that's kind of, that's the moment that we panic, though. So now it's there there you know the uh the MC is announcing your band. Now's not the time to start figuring out why we feel this way. Now is not the time to unleash the floodgates of emotion to try to dissolve the swords. Now is a time for us to basically just in some way bypass these swords. It's almost maybe we can put put our confidence on top of it. Maybe it's a, a fake it till you make it kind of thing. Maybe we need to override that air and water with our fire energy, right? Maybe we can just set it up like that and then we can put this moon card up here and we're ready to go out on stage. We got to deal with this stuff though, you know, but at this moment, you're just about to step out. You know, you've, you've been announced and the lights are coming on, the curtain's opening. You've got to be able to do what you do. Okay, because you're good at it, and and this is what you've wanted to do. This is where you're meant to be, 
this is is what you know the meaning of life is for you it's that intense i feel like this is something you've always wanted to do maybe again since you were a child maybe you said one day one day i'm going to be out there on stage or i'm going to be uh, this kind of a of a of a of a master musician you know whatever it might be so we've got to be able to do this and i think again we need to override the water and air with this fire energy. All this fire has the potential to, I mean, just elementally speaking, these three fire cards are going to make an easy meal out of this air and water. If it's just the water, these fire cards will just burn it right up. And the air even. We could use the air to fan the flames to get over this water, right? So all this nervousness, all of this anxiety, all of this self-doubt, all of this like not believing in ourselves, let's just in some way channel that down to this fire and use that fire to bring all of this together. Okay. Now I know that's probably a lot easier said than done. Um, but let's move to the path of the serpent because maybe we'll see a little bit of, of how this is done, okay? And maybe this is the moment, maybe this is all happening in a day or two, um, you know, so it's not, you know, I don't think as you're watching this reading that the, the curtains are opening and you're on your phone and you're watching YouTube. Maybe you are, you know. Um, you know, I think it's, it's fun to watch YouTube any time of day. But... Um, General energy, queen of discs. One thing that you can do with this air energy is look back at all the work that you've done. Right? This is a card. I love the queen of pentacles. Not only is, is it one of the most beautiful cards in the Thoth deck, but the energy is so dynamic. Even though it is a queen of pentacles, it's water of earth, it's two very passive elements yielding magnetic you know energies but the card is so dynamic okay and it's in your general energy so this i think is what you should be doing maybe you are doing this right now kind of during during this reading think back about all of the accomplishments that you've made all the struggles all the hours of practicing all of the years of study right um, all of the failures, all of the struggles, all of the hardships, all of the joys, all everything. Look back over the years at how much work you've done and how far you've come. Okay. And once you get a good sense of that, if that doesn't spark a little bit of this six of wands, which it probably will, look to the future. See, this card... Sometimes I would say, well, this figure's looking back. They're from they're sitting in their place of power. They're sitting in their success. They're looking back at everything they've they've done. They're looking back at the road that they took to get where they are. But also this figure is looking forward at the road that's in front of them now. At everything they still have to do of everywhere that they can go now that they've achieved this success, this isn't the, the summit. This isn't the finish line. This isn't the final resting place. This is just our home base for right now. There's still a long road in front of us. There's a lot more to do. And having traveled this road in the past to get here, now we have so much more possibility and opportunity to go forward. Now we can do, we can do so much more now. Right, The future is so open and unlimited to us. Maybe this figure is trying to just pick kind of what road they want to go. right? What path they want to take now. Now that they have the resources, now that they've made this accomplishment, they've reached this milestone or this, you know, this base camp. Uh, now they, they can really decide for themselves what they want to do in the future, where they want to take this thing, whatever it is. So not only should you look back at all of the, the hard work that you've, you've already done, everything that you've already been through, 
But now kind of look the other direction, look forward. Where do you see this thing going? What do you, what's your vision for a year or five years from now? You know, what is the potential? What is your ideal? What is the dream? We have a lot of dreamy kind of cards here. That moon energy, very dreamy. This priestess energy that we're ending with, this is a moon energy too. Very dreamy, right? So it's kind of, um, I, I think the, the universe or the spirit is, is trying to get you to manifest this dream, to wake up to this dream, to, to accept it, that it is real, that it, it is happening. We have this good earth energy too. We have this universe or world card. This is earth energy. So it's basically saying, look, your dream is real. You can, you can accept it. You can be confident in this because it, it really is happening, you know? Um, so let's look to the future and see what is your ideal? Where do you want to be in a few months, a few years, or whatever the timeline is? What is, what kind of, of life, what kind of energy are you going to be? Right? in the future. And if that doesn't give you some of this confidence to get to this queen of, of wands, um, then maybe we have to go to what's next, the four of swords. Okay. Four of swords is any way that you can find to take a, a bit of a mental break. Um, you know, deep breathing. We've got the air energy, the four, right? Four of swords, fourfold breath. You breathe in, pause, breathe out, pause, continue the cycle, right? Calms you down. So I think deep breathing, a very controlled, calm breathing, very rhythmic breathing. When you're about to perform, you're about to do something where you're very nervous, you know, uh, that will help. I think this is also uh, getting some relief in the form of communication, talking with others, right? Call somebody on, on the phone. Call your significant other. Call your friend. Call your therapist. Call anybody, right? Just dial whoever. And, um, and just talk. Just having a conversation does two things. One, it, it connects us with someone, right? It kind of takes us out of ourself, and we have to engage with someone else, and that helps us to get out of this air and water energy. But the other thing, the other thing, and this is what I've, what I've learned uh, in my time as an EMT, that engaging someone in conversation is a way to get them, get you, get you to control your breathing. If you're talking, you're breathing, and you're regulating your breathing, and you're controlling your own airways. So it's all a way of getting the oxygen in and the carbon dioxide out so that you can calm down and you can do what you need to do. Right. So there's a lot of a lot of air energy here that we can use. That's not going to be as restricting. This is the this is the air energy that is like we can't breathe. You know, this is when we're just kind of we're we're so just frantic or or we're just we're kind of hyperventilating maybe with that eight of swords. This is the calm controlled breathing. So engage someone in conversation. Okay. I think that that's a way to calm your mind down. I think anyone who does breathing practices, pranayama, any fourfold breath kind of thing. Uh, I would like to hear your opinions in the comments, but I find that doing controlled breathing really allows the mind to settle and to calm down. The thoughts come more slowly. There's not as much tension mentally when we control our breathing. Okay, that's probably why breath exercises are a very large part of um, kind of traditional meditation practices. I mean, I don't know. That's is that obvious? That might be obvious. Anyway, next card, universe or world card, but it's in the position of what we don't want. Is this the stage? Is this what we are? This this position is also like our fears, worries, and concerns. You know, so a little bit of stage fright. We don't want to be front and center. We don't want to be in the limelight. We don't want to be, you know, public speaking. We don't want to be at the front of the class giving our presentation, but we need to. 
okay? Because you're talented, you're skilled, you've done all the hard work, if this is the only thing that we have to overcome, well, it feels like you have to overcome the entire world, the entire universe, right? This is really heavy, right? This is everything. This is the biggest obstacle of your life. But at the same time, I think you're going to find it. it's not as difficult as it seems. It feels like this is going to be a huge, huge obstacle, right? It's the whole world, the whole universe on your shoulders right now. It's tons of pressure, right? I'm probably not helping, but this is what we need, right? And this is kind of a card that says, because this is Saturn as well as Earth, okay? And Saturn is very strict, very unforgiving, right? And basically, Saturn and Earth are saying that the only way you're going to do anything in life, whether you like it or not, is to push yourself into uncomfortable situations. That's how you grow. And you're growing and you're doing this and you've been on the path. You've been this fire energy. You are this fire energy. You are spirit. So getting through this is, it may seem very ominous and very, very challenging. And it will be challenging. But it's how you're going to grow by putting yourself into this situation. By being uncomfortable, we force ourselves to adapt, not only physically, you know, exercising, lifting weights and stuff, but mentally and emotionally too. We do things that are challenging so that we develop a, a kind of tolerance to challenging things, right? And then what was once very challenging now is going to be pretty easy. Then you push yourself a little bit more. Find out what else is going to be challenging for you. Eventually, you could be center stage of the entire universe, and it won't be very challenging anymore. You're going to be used to it. But we have to work ourselves up to that. So maybe we start with smaller venues, right? Until we get to the, the stadium of the, the entire universe. So I think that this is how you are growing. This is how you are creating yourself. And whatever work this is, it doesn't have to be music. It doesn't have to be showbiz. Uh, whatever it is, I feel like you need to be a little bit uncomfortable at times so that you can get used to it, you know, so that you can go and do bigger and better things because you have the potential, the skill, the will, the talent, the creativity, the hardworking energy. Um, and then we've got the moon energy, of course. My daughter's toy again. It... Always at the weirdest moments, spirit will kind of activate that, that toy. Now it still has batteries in it, but it didn't used to do that. It's been down here for months now, and I don't know. Maybe the someone said the batteries were probably running out. That's probably true, but um, still meaningful coincidences, right? Anyway, so we've got this moon energy, and this is at the end of the path of the serpent, this is really all of your dreams coming true. This is the kind of, um, this is the dream. This is the five or 10 years, what you see. And this is what you see in the distance, in the future. You see this tremendous spiritual energy. And this is here to remind you to welcome this with open arms because this is meant for you, okay? I think, honestly, this is the only reading that you need right here. You know, just watch this one over and over and over again whenever you need it. It's timeless. It's here. It's not going anywhere. Um, remember to open your arms to this and receive it because this is meant for you. Yes, it's challenging. Yes, we have issues to deal with. But this is meant for you and this is your dream. This is your dream coming true. Okay. I think this is, this is major. I'm curious what it is. I hope it's music, but whatever it is, even if it's something at work, even if it's just you, um, you know, having to give a presentation at work or going in for that promotion or going in for that first interview or something, whatever it is, it's you putting yourself in uncomfortable situations to get more comfortable, to grow. And there's no limit to how massive you can be, right? To how, um, how massive your dream can be. Let's look at the mystery card. 
Thank you, Alien, for being the guardian of our mystery today. I don't know what this is going to be. Maybe some clarified air. You know, maybe some purified air. Maybe we've, we've ionized it. So maybe a six of swords. Maybe this will be a six of pentacles. Maybe it will be a three of wands, even. Let's find out. <laughs> even better. It's the fool. Look at that. Yeah, this is this is definitely the only reading that you're going to need. Uh, just keep coming back to this one. Um, the fool energy. This is this is air now that we we we've dissolved the air just in in other air, right? We've just kind of changed our perspective on things. The fool is someone who is infinitely. Uh, conscious of everything, wants to expand awareness. This fool puts itself into as many, I mean, look, we have the, first of all, we have alpha and omega. We have the beginning and the end. The fool is out here in the universe experiencing everything. Everywhere the fool goes, the fool is the center of the universe. It is center stage, right? And it's from that perspective that the fool is gaining so much experience so much energy, is doing everything and anything in the world, in the universe. The fool doesn't have any self-consciousness, though. The, the fool is pure consciousness to the point where it's not aware of a self. And that's why the fool can be out there acting like a fool. It has no self-awareness. It's not self-conscious, right? It doesn't have that anxiety. It just wants to go and experience, and it's completely natural, completely spontaneous, just wants to expand its universe. And it's always the center. Everywhere it goes, it's the center of attention. It's center stage. It's the center of the universe. So this is kind of like a very, um, maybe a very foolish way to get over some of these obstacles is to just and I know probably easier said than done, but the fool is saying, look, just don't worry about it. Just don't mind it. You know, if you're experiencing some, you know, um, some pessimism, some difficult, uh, you know, habits or patterns of thoughts, if you are not trusting in yourself, just be like the fool and just look at that as another experience and just move, just keep going, just keep moving on right? We dwell in that and we start to develop this self-consciousness, then pretty soon all of this fool energy is not expanding anymore, but it's contracting. We're making the universe smaller. And now the universe is just kind of right here, what's right in front of us, and we start getting claustrophobic in ourselves, in our own, our own soul, you know, our own bodies. So it, it sounds kind of foolish and simple, but it's meant to. Just don't mind it. Stop minding so much that you think or feel or you're nervous or you have a little bit of stage fright. Yeah, you do. And that's, you, you accept that. As just as another experience in this vast infinite universe of which you are always the center and you are always uh, experiencing it. You're always kind of enjoying it, but again, there's no self-consciousness. So it's not like, it's not like we have this, um, we have this awareness of ourselves moving through the universe. It's just we, we are the universe, right? We are whatever we're doing. And it's, I think we need to meditate on this fool and see if this can give us the key to get through this situation and to continue with this work that you're doing to manifest this dream, right? The fool is the dreamer that is not aware that they're dreaming, not aware that they are even... A, a being, right? There's no, there's no awareness of self. It's just the dream. So this is interesting. This is a very interesting confirmation card. We're going to look into it uh, maybe a little bit in the extended. If you would like to stick around, just click up here. That'll give you access to every extended reading, not just for Aquarius, but for every zodiac sign. Okay. I want to thank you for taking this journey with me. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I'll see you again soon, and thank you for being the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot.